Hey guys, it's Abby here. I'm going to be showing in this video how to put FFC cables back into an ET15000 printer. So right now we already have the scanner off of the printer and I am putting back in the FFC cables um, towards the main board. The way you know which ones go towards the main board is it's just going to be the side that has two cables, um, not the side with three. So I bent my two cables to make sure that it could fit through the hole in the main rail. Um, and then I unfolded it and I'm connecting my FFC cables into the main board. If you take off any FFC cables like I did, um, this smaller cable along top of the frame that also goes into the main board, make sure you put it back into place. Um, that FFC cable did not get fully taken out, but I had to detach it from the main board and lift it up to have easier access to placing the cables back in that I did take out. Now I'm going to be working on this PSD assembly. I had to detach it from the main frame. Um, but I didn't detach it fully as you can see so this is gonna be put back over the FFC cables that had double-sided tape which is why we had to detach it from the rail initially but there's tabs that will line back up into the main rail and there's gonna be a hole on the side of this PSD assembly where the LD shaft will fit in and there's a spring that's holding this finger um, with a roller at the end that goes through the paper feed, the back, uh, the back paper feed hopper. So that's where I'm testing that spring to make sure that it moves. Um, I'm wanting to try to push the PSD assembly over to the right side of the printer to make sure that it is fully on that uh, roller. And that's also how I will get it to snap back into place with the main rail. You'll feel it click into place when you push it over far enough that the tabs go in and so you can give it a little tug to make sure that it's not going to fall out of place and that's how you know that you got it in and I just test that little uh, rolling finger on the spring. So now we have the PSD assembly back, we have our FFC cables back into the main board. Now I'm just taking the, uh, the wires and I'm running them back through um, the little notches that keep the wires from getting tangled or from staying out of place. And here's where you can try to make your printer look pretty um, by finding what's the best way uh, if a cable should go under a wire or if a wire should go under or over a cable so you can see I've detached an FFC cable again to uh, try to fit a wire a little bit um, nicer and so it's not as bulky for when I put my casing parts back on to the printer Just remind yourself that if you unplug anything to um, make something else fit better, make sure you plug it back in uh, so you don't cause another error later on in your printing and you, know, you can remember that everything's plugged in where it's supposed to be. Alright, and we have the front of the printer facing us now and here is this rail clip that holds these FFC cables to the um, mainframe there so for me I decided that it would be easier to try to measure first um, with the print head in the carriage before I did the clip to the frame uh, the rail clip so I put my print head in there the larger FFC cable goes to the bottom of the print head and you can stick that in there and that's where you say I said there's three FFC cables leading to the print head. There's that one and the two smaller FFC cables are the other two. So I put my print head in there and so I could see how far the cables needed to reach there. 
and now I put my rail clip back over my FFC cables in the middle and I'm pressing that into the opening in the frame and I'm gonna push over to the left side to get it to snap back into place and hold and you can give your cables a little tug just to make sure that the clip isn't gonna pop out of place and you have your tabs locked in the main frame then we need to plug in the smaller FFC cables the bottom is for a page width sensor and the back is a CR sensor for reading the encoder strip so that was probably my hardest part throughout this whole thing was getting those smaller FFC cables back um, into the carriage the large FFC cable into the print head is easy so don't worry about that um, you just might have to tilt your printer around to get the best angle of sticking those smaller FFC cables back in and so once you do that, you can move um, your print head and your carriage back and forth a little bit to see if it reaches on both sides um, before you go any further. Uh, that way you don't do all the work just to find out that it doesn't reach um, one way or another. And here I am adjusting my FFC cables into a small slit on the side of the carriage. Uh, it's on the left side of the carriage. There's a small slit in the top where you see I'm working that larger FFC cable in and then that small top FFC cable fits right behind it into that slit in the top to keep your uh, FFC cables from getting tangled or damaged at all. So now I'm just screwing down my print head. There should be three screws um, that are required to keep the print head down in place. So I'll screw those in. And we have our damper holder that fits right at the top of that carriage. You'll see two sides of the carriage have openings for that damper holder. And I'll put all four of my dampers in. Make sure you put them in the correct spot so you don't mix any ink. Uh, then I'll get my tubes and I will work on connecting each of the correct colored ink to the correct colored damper as they go. There will be a screw or two on either side of this tube holder uh, and that will keep that in place. Then I'll use this plastic tube guard to um, lock into place over the tube so when it prints back and forth that plastic guard does not get caught or ripped um, or jammed in the printer. That would be not good. So then we have this damper cover that uh, I had a little trouble with putting in as well but I think if you lift it up at an angle and put those smaller tabs in down first then it should lock into place a lot easier I have the CR clip that I am now putting in um, to protect the smaller FFC cables on the side and the bottom of the carriage so with this you want to lock it in place a little bit and push up <coughs> When you push down is to take it out and lift that tab up so basically you're lining it into place pushing towards the carriage and then pushing up will lock that CR clip into place uh, to put the spring on make sure that blue lever is facing towards you and I use my hand just to stretch the spring on there uh, and then I push the lever back into locking position now I just need to stick on my scanner to test out um, and see if the FFC cables are in the right way um, and there's no error so make sure that your scanner fits onto both of the hinges in the back of the actual printer and then you can put in the blue uh, scanner support by twisting it into place and then we'll shut you can lower it once lower it twice and then open it back up the way we need to hook up the scanner is there's a small um, wire and it has a yellow cap but it connects to uh, a black connection on the main board and then there's two FFC cables so I powered it on and the printer gave me no troubles 
so that was really good and we got the ffc cables to work i hope you enjoyed this video please visit us at bchtechnologies.com or locally in greensboro north carolina happy printing